Hi, everybody. Happy Feast of the Annunciation of the Lord. To celebrate the feast, I wanted to read from you from the Liturgy of the Hours, the second reading. Uh, every day in the Liturgy of the Hours, there is the Office of Readings, and there's two readings. The first is usually from Scripture. The second is from one of the saints or from one of the church documents. Today's reading is from St. Leo the Great, from a letter that he wrote. So this is very beautiful, and I hope you appreciate it. St. Leo writes, Lowliness is assured by majesty, weakness by power, mortality by eternity. To pay the debt of our sinful state, a nature that is incapable of suffering was joined to one that could suffer. Thus, in keeping with the healing that we needed, one and the same mediator between God and man, the man Jesus Christ, was able to die in one nature and unable to die in the other. He, who is true God, was therefore born in the complete and perfect nature of a true man, whole in his own nature, whole in ours. By our nature we mean what the Creator had fashioned in us from the beginning and took to himself in order to restore it. Just pause here. Just hang with me. I know there's a lot of uh, abstract theological language, but just hang with me and I think you'll find it's a very beautiful meditation. He goes on. For in the Savior there was no trace of what the deceiver introduced and man, being misled, allowed to enter. It does not follow that because he submitted to sharing in our human weakness, he therefore shared in our sins. He took the nature of a servant without stain of sin, enlarging our humanity without diminishing his divinity. He emptied himself, though invisible, he made himself visible. Though creator and lord of all things, he chose to be one of us mortal men. Yet this was the condescension of compassion, not the loss of omnipotence. So he, who in the nature of God had created man, became in the nature of his servant, man himself. Thus the Son of God enters this lowly world. He comes down from the throne of heaven, yet does not separate himself from the Father's glory. He is born in a new condition by a new birth. He was born in a new condition, for invisible in his own nature, he became visible in ours. Beyond our grasp, he chose to come within our grasp. Existing before time began, he began to exist at the moment, at a moment in time. Lord of the universe, he hid, he hid his infinite glory and took the nature of a servant. Incapable of suffering as God, he did not refuse to be a man, capable of suffering. Immortal, he chose to be subject to the laws of death. He who is true God is also true man. There is no falsehood in this unity as long as the lowliness of man and the preeminence of God coexist in mutual relationship. As God does not change by his condescension, so man is not swallowed up by being exalted. Each nature ex exercises its own activity in communion with the other. The word does what is proper to the word. The flesh fulfills what is proper to the flesh. One nature is resplendent with miracles, the other falls victim to injuries. As the word does not lose equality with the Father's glory, so the flesh does not leave behind the nature of our race. One and the same person, this must be said over and over again, is truly the Son of God and truly the Son of Man. He is God in virtue of the fact that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He is man in virtue of the fact that the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. So why this focus on the Word becoming flesh? Well, because today's Feast of the Annunciation is about exactly that. The Word became flesh in the womb of the Virgin Mary at the Annunciation. And so nine months from today, we celebrate... That's right, Christmas. God bless you and see you soon.